The president touched down in Air Force One this evening in a driving rainstorm. And if the weather doesn't clear by tomorrow, it could be difficult for him to see the devastation. Mr. Carter arrived with a number of politicians from around the Northwest. Secretary of Agriculture Bob Berglund was here to survey the damage to eastern Washington farmlands. Interior Secretary Cecil Andrus was also in the party. Much of that volcanic ash is falling in his home state of Idaho. Mr. Carter, surrounded by Secret Service agents, greeted Washington Governor Dixie Lee Ray and Oregon Governor Victor Atiyah. Yesterday, Governor Ray asked the president to declare the state of Washington a disaster area. That followed her own tour of the devastated area around Mount St. Helens. Oregon Congressman Lassa Coyne told the president the volcano threatens more than $200 million worth of grain, which cannot be shipped because the Columbia River is blocked. On his flight to Portland, the president was told the Mount St. Helens explosion was several times larger than the atomic bombs that leveled the city of Hiroshima in World War II. From the airbase, the president and his motorcade traveled on to Vancouver for a briefing from disaster officials. At the Air National Guard base, Stan Wilson reporting, Channel 2 News. As President Carter prepared to board his helicopter this morning, he wasn't alone. About 50 reporters from all over the nation toured the disaster area with the president. Mr. Carter says the national press coverage gives the entire nation the chance to see exactly what has happened in southwest Washington. So a fleet of seven helicopters took to the air. The first order of business was a quick look at the Columbia River, which has been blocked by tons of mud and debris. That blockage threatens $200 million worth of grain and could cut off shipping from Portland for several months. Then it was up to the Longview area, where the lowlands have been flooded for several days. But the real damage is further up the Toodle River Valley, where the river swelled to several times its normal size, washing away dozens of homes. Clouds and mist limited visibility, but the president was able to see much of the 150 square miles of devastation. We flew low, giving the president a clear view of the blowdown area. That's where trees were knocked down in the violent explosion of the volcano on Sunday. That first blast was 2,500 times as strong as the atomic bomb that leveled Hiroshima in World War II. $500 million worth of timber was knocked down in that blast. We couldn't see the top of the mountain because of the clouds, but we did fly within three miles of the volcano for these dramatic pictures. Geologists have told President Carter the whole top of the mountain has been destroyed and that Mount St. Helens is now about 1,500 feet shorter than it was before that violent eruption. There was a fear the giant dam formed by these mud flows could break loose, bringing more major flooding, but it appears that danger has passed, at least for now. After the 45-minute tour, the president landed at the Longview Kelso Airport. Also arriving, Washington Governor Dixie Lee Ray, who has asked the president for money immediately to aid the volcano victims. From the airport, the motorcade was off to the Cascade Middle School in Longview, where the Red Cross has set up a temporary emergency shelter for the people who have been evacuated. Taking part, doing it, but I'm going to keep them there for you. guys are doing a hell of a good job. Oh, Ed Cal, right for emergency services. Hey, Our reporter, Kathy Kiyomura, picks up the story from here. It was here that President Carter personally discovered the volcano's effect on people and their environment. He found that each face, each expression, represented a different story of survival, courage, and unparalleled personal loss. He asked why. Why were people up on the mountain? It's because the mountain blew so many times. Nobody believed that it would really become a disaster. Nobody believed that it could be as horrible as it is. Do you often say to yourself, why me? No. I just say, thank God that me and my kids got out. We could have been one that didn't. President Carter found that the people housed here belong to an elite sort of group. They are the homeless refugees of Mount St. Helens Raft. Some of the individuals hit hardest out of a million in the state affected by the eruption. 
I hope that he understands what the situation is and that these people are going to have to have some help. Because he was up there, he saw the area and he said it's, it was bad. President Carter explained to many of these people that his recent disaster area declaration triggers federal assistance and financial aid. With this help, many hope to pick up the pieces and start over again. Reporting from Longview, Kathy Kiyomura, Channel 2 News. The crowd that greeted the president at the Longview Kelso Airport was small but friendly. President Carter, in a hurry to return to Portland, blew the onlookers a kiss, but he didn't have time to stop and shake hands with the crowd. During an impromptu news conference, he told reporters the devastation he saw from the volcano was worse than he had ever believed possible. I've never seen or heard of anything like this before. Somebody said it looked like a moonscape, mm -hmm. but the moon looks like a golf course compared to, uh, <laughs> compared to what's up there. And this, it is a horrible looking sight. The president also told reporters he expects a dome of lava to eventually bubble from the volcano's crater and cap the top of the mountain once again. In Longview, even a National Guardsman had a chance to take a picture of the president before he was once again off in his helicopter. Following the quick tours of the Mount St. Helens area and the evacuation center in Longview, it was back to Portland for a news conference where Mr. Carter announced his findings. This is Paul Hansen at the Marriott Hotel. After viewing the area near Mount St. Helens, it was clear that President Carter was amazed at the scope and breadth of the damage and destruction from the volcano's eruption, comparing the blast to the explosion of 10 nuclear bombs. The absolute and total devastation of a region that encompasses about 150 miles, it's the worst thing I have ever seen. It is, is, it is literally indescribable, and it's a devastation. There is no way to prepare oneself for the sight that we beheld this morning. I don't know that there's in recorded history in our nation that has ever been a more formidable explosion. Mr. Carter said it may be years, perhaps decades, before the area is restored, but he is promising widespread federal help for the region, calling on Governors Ray of Washington and Evans of Idaho to establish a committee to help plan and coordinate disaster relief efforts. He again promised federal help at clearing the Columbia River Channel and said he would support a stepped-up timber harvest policy to help salvage downed trees in the area before they rot. But is the federal government adequately prepared to deal with this once-in-a-lifetime disaster, or will we see delays and bureaucratic snafus? <laughs> I can't promise you that, that I, as president, have the ability to prevent a volcanic eruption. <laughs> and, uh, and my own experience is that government snafus are quite often not delayed. <laughs> Mr. Carter also predicted that once the area around the volcano is safe, Mount St. Helens will attract tourists and scientists from all over the world on a scale equal to or greater than the Grand Canyon. Following the news conference, Mr. Carter left for Spokane, Washington to further assess the damage from the eruption. In Portland, Paul Hansen, Channel 2 News. This is Essex Porter. The president's visit came on short notice, but as the word spread that he was coming, many people at the Marriott Hotel put aside their plans for the evening and wanted to catch a glimpse. Demonstrators began to show up, some protesting the draft, others nuclear power, and one just wanted to praise the Lord. No one was sure of the president's schedule, but the crowd numbered in the hundreds as the motorcade finally reached the entrance. President Carter shook hands and greeted well-wishers. He said nothing of substance as he entered the elevator to go to his suite. An entourage of about 150 staff members and reporters are accompanying the president. At the Marriott Hotel in downtown Portland, Essex Porter reporting, Channel 2 News.